<laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee, and today we have a different background. Sister Woman, Jonna, i.e. Uh, scrappy Camper Sister 1, and, this, and Darcy 1 and 2, um, sent me this with the journal that I purchased to uh, help her go on her mission tour. And so she she has uh, sold sold a few and still selling I guess these cloth faux dories, um, and I added another I uh, added an extra what do you call it a stretchy to it. So I'll show you this here in a second. Now it, it came empty and I put my own stuff in it. It has a pin holder on it. It's nice cloth. It's like 50s retro, 40s maybe. 40s, late, early 50s retro, and so she, I love this fabric, and so she's making them, so I'll show you that here in a second. Anyway, the reason I said that is because she had the sock monkey, band. it's a bandana, she had this bandana wrapped around it, it was so fun opening that. Anyway, so uh, I'm probably not going to do an art project, I'm going to show some happy mail, I'm going to show what Jonna sent me, she sent me a... Um, she she wasn't my swap partner in the um, pocket page swap that Janet, who is here, uh, is doing. She just likes doing them, and she sent me one. So I'm going to show you that. And so it's kind of be, going to be a Jonna happy mail, but we're also going to talk about the, the drawing we're going to do. All right, so for those of y'all that know or wanted to be a part of it, and I did print my own out right off of my printer so everybody can see it's the same as what you would print out. So this is not this is not the my original drawing, which is on white. I did the original drawing on white paper, and it's just a sketch. And you can see, I mean, the eye, they're not per, it's not perfect. And, and I thought, well, maybe I should go back and fix that eye a little darker. I said, no, because that's not what's important. It's not important. It's just as important that you can see it. Okay? It's just important that you can see the sketch. Not that it's like, because you're going to go over everything. So what I did is I drew it on white, and I took a picture of it and uploaded it to my blog and YouTube. So if you're watching the recording, Inky Well, I-N-K-I, InkyWell.blogspot.com, and if then you can go print, you just right-click on it, save picture as, and print it out on tan paper. This process that I'm going to show y'all on, I think we're going to start it on Wednesday. Um, hang on, guys. My Twitter's going crazy. Let me take my iPad out. Um, the process that I'm going to do is how I do my portraits on tan or toned or gray or color paper. And so you have to print it out on tan. It doesn't have to necessarily be this exact tan, and we're going to talk about that as well, but you do have to print it out on a toned paper for this process that I'm going to show you do uh, work. Now, again, I'm not a teacher. I, uh, I don't claim to be, and this, what I'm showing you is I'm showing it all for free on my stream. and if you want to be a part of it live, y'all come on over, y'all come on down <laughs> to my stream show Coffee and Art in the Morning, or, um, you know, just put in my name, or uh, Inkwell, uh, it's Inkwell, just plain Inkwell, I believe on stream. but if you put in Coffee and Art in the Morning, you'll find me. Okay, so anyway, if y'all have any questions, put them in caps so that I can address the questions. Hi, Mandy. So Ma this is Mandy's daughter, which um, I've already done uh, commissions of her two children, and they're on the way to, we both have our fingers crossed, they're heading to Australia. I usually don't do, when I do commissions for uh, UK or Australia, I usually uh, only do um I'll do them, but you have to do you have to print them out. They're not the originals. I can't uh, be because of I have no way to tracking portraits and things like that overseas. It's I just can't you know I think it's one hundred fifty dollars to track or something like that. I just you know so um, anyway, but Mandy and I decided we would take a chance 
And if it gets there, it gets there. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's, you know, we're, we're hoping for the best. And it'll probably take a, at least a couple weeks to get to her. Anyway, she has generously offered to let us use a sketch of her daughter, a, a picture of her daughter to draw. So that this is Amelia. Now, a couple things. One, I've only posted just the drawing, just this, on my blog and on, you, and on Twitter. You can download the picture and print it out on tan paper. I'm not showing you her photograph yet, although probably if you looked in Mandy's Facebook feed, you could find it. But uh, I, have a, I have a method to the madness here. I want you to try to print out two or three. I printed out three. Okay, and I'm I'm gonna work on the same printout that you guys are. In other words, this is a this is a copy. It's not gonna erase. Okay, this is the same thing you guys are gonna work on. Uh, yeah, me too, Mandy. This is the same thing you guys are gonna work on as far as a printout. This is printed on the paper. I did it in a tan like a a sepia tone. A color for you to print out so it's not harsh black but I think it's dark enough for everybody to see you can before you print it out lighten it up contrast it a little it's all going to depend on your printer how well you see it okay so you know uh, and print out a couple the reason and I'm going to kind of go through this while we're talking about it the reason I want you to print out two or three is this is going to be pencil practice Okay, this is going to be pencil practice. If you don't like the way it's turning out, then just go to another one. But I'm not going to show you the photograph at least for um, until we get into it. The reason is I'm not trying to get you all to draw a portrait of Amelia. I'm trying to get you like used to different methods of shading and contouring and all that. And if you see the picture... And your your shading is not looking exactly like you think the picture looks. You're going to get discouraged. Okay? Do you know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> I don't want you to look at the photograph of Amelia and go, oh, my gosh, it doesn't look anything like that. I, I can't do this. I'm giving up. I don't want you to do that. So for at least for a while, and, again, that's why we, you got multiples. If you don't, you know, we do the first one, and then you see the picture, and you go, oh, my gosh, I want to start over. Well, just print it out again. This is going to be pencil practice. <laughs> okay? So, uh, make sure you put in caps if you have any questions or anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna gonna to go through some of the pencil. Again, don't go out and spend $200 on a new set of Prisma colors. For one, you may not like doing color pencil. Number two, if you've already done color pencil and you like color pencil, you're probably already going to have the colors anyway. But in the meantime, try to just get colors similar to these. Again, this is practice. Okay, I want y'all to feel that that it's practice. Hey, Eileen, um, I want y'all to feel like it is practice and not uh, you're doing a portrait that's going to be judged by anybody. Okay, so don't don't be uh, thinking that. Okay, all right. So let me kind of gl glance at chat. So print this out two or three times. Print it out as many times as you want. You can see where the bottom right here is a little darker from the where I printed it out. Okay, so I'm going to be working on the exact same printout. In other words, this does not erase. We, and I'm going to be doing the same thing uh, with, along with you. My, this isn't going to erase for me either. All right? Okay, so let me go ahead and tell you some of the colors that I use in my... And this, uh, I didn't even put any greens in here because she has blue eyes, and I'm not going to be using any green, as far as I know. Uh, if we change that in our mind, you know, if you have just a basic set of, I like Prisma colors because they blend the best. But if you don't have that, use what you have and and practice, and then see if you like doing color pencil, and then you can invest in more uh, more pencils. Okay. Uh, I can tell you the colors I have, and if there's an open stock at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and, and a couple of these I really, you know, I use a lot, then you can see if you can find them. But if you can't, just use something similar, okay? At least to practice with, guys. And again, I'm not going to post the photograph of Amelia, and, t and, and when I do post it, I'll post it on my blog again, same place. Uh, I don't. I want y'all to have a couple of sessions 
I don't know how long this will take. I haven't timed this out. We'll be doing it live. I will record and I will be uploading it to YouTube so you can watch the recording. Um, and after a couple sessions, then when we start, when it starts looking like her, then I'll post the photograph for y'all to start tweaking it. Okay, because I do realize you really need the photograph to do a portrait. But at first, I want you guys just to practice with the pencils and the shading and not worry, oh, it doesn't look exactly like her. Then you'll get discouraged. Does that make sense? I use Prismas, yes, Eileen, but if you have polychromes, if you have Crayola crayon ones. The other thing that I want to mention is Vaughn had mentioned that she she doesn't do color pencils. She does um, oil pastel. I, I'm not positive, but I think she could probably do the same type of thing with her pastels and the shading and blending. She's well aware of the properties of her oil pastel. Same thing if you do chalks. You could probably do some of similar things. Now, I, I, I couldn't get a detail in a in the uh, iris of an eye without a pencil. But if you are uh, well uh, versed in your medium, whether it be oil, pastel, chalk, um, whatever. Uh, now, I, not watercolor. Watercolor, we're we're not. This isn't going to be a, a watercolor workable thing. Okay, because we start with white. All right, but uh, if you're well versed in in those those mediums, you could probably you know at least get some practice in. At least get some practice in. Okay. Well then, okay. I'm sorry, Moomy, if you're already discouraged. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> yes, tone paper. Now, I just, I'm using the Michaels Recollection brand, so I'm trying to do everything like you, maybe you guys were using. Now, when I'm doing portraits and, uh, you know, I'm probably going to be using most time, not all the time, I don't use Strathmore tan. Sometimes I'll use the gray. Sometimes I'll use pink or blue or, you know, de depending on what the project is. But this is not this. And you can see, let me show you the different color here. This is a little bit different color. It may be hard to show on camera. This has a little bit more gray to it. This is just the Michaels Recollection brand pack. Let me see if I got one unopened. I don't have an, a color one. This is what they look like except in colors. They're just the Michaels Recollection. They're 65 pound weight, 50 sheets, and they come in tan brown, a pack of different shades of brown, uh, different shades of pink. They come, and they're only like two or three dollars for a pack of 50. Okay, um, but use whatever you have, any kind of tan paper. If you have the big uh, Strathmore, if you have this nine by um, what is it? Nine by twelve. Cut it down to eight and a half by eleven, so it'll slide through your printer. Unless you got a big printer. I mean, you know. But uh, the drawing will be on. This is eight and a half by eleven, standard size. Okay. Yeah, you know, pastel pencils, whatever you you want to try. But I'm just saying. I'm not going to be able to help you with your pastels, your oil pastels, or anything like that. Okay? If you want to, if that's what you're used to using and you just want to practice with them, then go ahead and try it. But I'm going to be using color pencils and that's what I will be focused on. Um, yeah, any tan, any tan paper, Mandy, that'll fit through your, you know, this is eight and a half by 11. Any that will fit through your printer so that you can print out the, the little sketch of Amelia just so that we can all work along together. That's the thing. That's all right, Mandy. Hang on, girl. Hang on. <laughs> hey, Cindy. Hey, homeschool mama four. Okay. So that that's the, the thing about that. Okay. So we have a full house. So if y'all have any questions, please put them in caps because the chat just rolls, rolls, rolls. All right. Um. Hey, Barb, anybody else popping in? All right, so that's the deal on the printing it out. Just go to my blog, right-click on the picture, save picture as to wherever you want in your computer, and print it out. Uh, if it looks, you know, if it's not clear enough for you, bring up some contrast or whatever you need. Your printer, you know your printer, you know, I don't. 
So, but just print it out on some form of tan paper. Again, people, this is not going to be a, um, I, I want y'all to try to learn more about color pencil and doing people and things like that, but it's not like a full portraiture. We'll finish her, but it's going to be a different kind of step by step. I'm not letting you see the photograph until we get into it because I don't want you to be discouraged. I want it to be a practice. So print out a couple. If you don't like the way the first one is going after you see the pencil, go, I mean the picture, then go back and start over. But I want y'all to get some practice with shading and stuff first. Hey, Colleen. Okay. The other thing that I want to tell you, I know I tell you all this all the time when I get into, I call it teaching mode, although I'm not a teacher. I start getting very, um, and, and Jean always teases me about it. I get into the, okay, pick up your pencils now. And like I'm, like I'm, you know, I don't know, like what I guess, I don't know. It just sounds like I'm being very, uh, um, I don't want to say gruff, but <laughs> I'm very methodical and just like step by step. I get into telling about how I'm teaching it rather than cutting up and all that stuff with you like I do on the impromptus and our paint flying and all that. So when I get into trying to to help you all get a step by step, sometimes I sound a little more serious. That's the word I'm looking for. I sound a little more serious than I really am. I'm really not that serious, but it sounds serious. So just be aware when I'm talking to you all. Okay. Um, Lumi, maybe you could go to, uh, do you have an office place, an office supply place where you can just bring it up? I don't, or make a, you know, uh, what do you call it, a thumb drive of it and take it to get it printed out? <coughs> okay, let me take a sip of coffee. And again, I will be recording so you can go back and do it later. If you can't do it, and I don't expect everybody to work as fast as I do. I will try to kind of slow down and talk about things and answer questions as we're doing it. Um, but, you know, I, I and if people come in in the middle of it, you're just going to have to go back and watch the recording because I can't be repeating going back when I've already got done a step. Um Yes, I'm focused on the task at hand. Thank you, AJ. That's a nice way to say it. All right. So let me go ahead and tell you some of the colors that I'm going to be using. I pulled out my most obvious ones. This does, um, I try to think of everything that I might possibly use, but I can't promise you that these would be the only ones. Oh, again, anybody coming in, there's my sock monkey bandana that Sister Woman Jonna sent me, wrapped around the uh, faux Midori that I purchased from her, and I'm going to show that here in a minute, along with a pocket page that she sent me. Okay. All right. Uh, links are, I think, yeah, do I have link? Yeah, links are open, and so if y'all have any, you know, thing y'all want to talk about other than this, feel free. Um, all right. So let me go ahead and tell you some of the pencils um, that I use. I use white and black, and again, these are all Prismacolor. Um, but, you know, and I'll try to, if I can see the numbers on them, I'll tell you what they are. Otherwise, uh, I'll tell you the names or close to. Do not feel like you have to have this exact, these exact ones. I couldn't tell you if I got this one. Say, for example, I can't tell you if I got this out of a 24 set or a 200 set or 120, rather. So uh, don't go out and buy a 120 set for 200 something dollars when you don't even know if you're going to like doing uh, <laughs> damn it. If you don't even know if you're going to like doing color pencil or you don't do it very often and you just want to, you know, follow along with this, okay? Uh, don't go out and do that. Use something similar because it's going to be practice. If you find that you really are enjoying it and want to invest in then go to Blick, get a coupon, you know, all that, okay? But don't go out today and buy a bunch of pencils. All right, now if you happen to be at Hobby Lobby and Michael, and you will have to have black and white. I will say that. <laughs> you will have to have black and white. All right, so these are the colors that I, I have. I have like three or four shades of gray. Uh, like from a, none of them are to the black, to the very blackest black, but like this one's 50% warm gray. Try to have a couple of grays. And then this one is like a blue-gray, 
and again, it's 70% cool gray. And the reason that I'm saying that is because a blue gray is great for shadows, especially in the eyes. So try to have a, a some kind of a blue gray, a dark blue gray. Like I said, this one is a 70% cool gray. But if you can't, if you don't have that, then look for like, uh, you know, the grayest blue you have. Okay, the, like the grayest blue. And a couple of shades, you, we may not even use three. We may only use one. I don't know yet. But have a couple of grays, like a dark and a lighter one, and a blue gray. All right, some form of a blue gray, even if it's blue, more on the blue side than it is gray. Uh, but try to have some grays. Okay, uh, have, I have, here's the darkest browns that I have. Uh, I do recommend having, this is dark umber, okay, a dark brown. If it's not dark umber number 947 in Prismacolor, that's okay. Just have a dark brown. We're, this is going to be practice, okay? <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to have to keep saying that. But when y'all say, oh, it's not exactly like yours, well, that's okay. We're going to, you're going to try to, this is a practice, okay? So a dark umber, oh, that's my pink. A, a burnt ochre or some kind of a sienna. Okay, a let me see if I have a different one too. All right, hang on, it's probably Denise. Hey Denise, I'm streaming. Can I call you back? Okay. All right, so this one is a, a burnt ochre, but I have another one here. I may not have it right here. Here it is. Terracotta. So the burnt ochre or and or a terracotta, either one of these will work for uh the the I'm gonna try to have us have the minimum that we can do and have it work, and then depending on how advanced you want to get into it, more and more shady. Okay, this is one of these two. I can't even remember which one is what I drew out uh, this with. And I and I was telling the girls before I hit record, I said, I noticed that one eye I did I drew a little darker than the other. I said, I'm going to leave that on purpose. I'm going to leave it not perfectly drawn because this is not going to matter. All this is going to be covered up. Okay, so I just left it like that so that y'all can see that it's not this that's going to matter. It's going to be what you put on top of it. Uh, okay, and again, there's a lag in chat. I'll try to tell you the numbers uh, if I can see them, depending on where I've, uh, where I've uh, sharpened. But you don't have to have these exact ones. All right, the terracotta is oh, it's got the paint on it. 944. And the burnt ochre is 943. Okay, one of these, you know, will be fine. Okay, uh, and then the dark brown, the dark umber was 947. Again, a dark brown, a you know, a terracotta color. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to keep it as minimal as I can for us to do the practice. Okay. Um. For the pinks, I'm not sure what color we're going to use on her lips. We'll have a little bit of pink. I just have a rose color, which we might use in her cheeks as well, and that's 929. It's just a, a basic pink, okay? It's your basic pink. And, I mean, of course, Prism Color has 10 shades of pink, but I got the one that's like the most just plain pink as I could. Then this is Dahlia Purple, and any kind of, a, just a little bit of a, a dark pink, a, a purple, something that will just give us maybe, I'm not sure we're going to need it, but in her lips, if we need just a little bit darker something to shade, uh, so instead of using like a brown in the lips, you can use a purple or a dark, dark pink. Uh, again, this one's probably one of those odd colors that comes in some weird set, but it's 1009. You don't have to have that exact color. Have just any, just purple. Okay, purple. <laughs> I'm trying to make it easy. Okay, I'm trying to remember the numbers they did. Alright, so now for blues, I'm going to get to the flesh tones last, okay? 
I have three shades of blue because her eyes are blue. I didn't even pick out really any greens because I don't think we'll be using any greens. Uh, so yeah, we might, but I don't. I, I'm picking out the ones that I think we're going to be obviously using. Uh, all right. So the colors of blue I have are blue violet lake, which is one zero seven nine. It is kind of a. It's kind of like the color in this pink. Is what I'm trying to say. Kind of like this blue harbor color. Okay. And again, I'm just kind of going by what I think her eye color is. So I got that color blue. You know, it's just call it a medium blue, a sky blue, which this one is a Caribbean Sea, 1103, kind of a, a medium blue and a light, light blue, okay, which this one is sky blue light number 1086. So kind of a medium blue, a lighter medium blue, and a light blue, okay. Now, I don't really have any dark, dark blues. Um, if we may need a dark blue, let's see. I don't know that we'll have to have a dark blue, but if we do, oh, sorry guys, I bumped the camera with my head. Uh, I use blue indigo. Okay, so if you buy a dark, a dark blue, a blue indigo, which is 901. Now, let me warn you, if you have this sitting in your set of whatever you're using, I don't know how many times I have picked up the blue indigo thinking it was black. You have to separate, if, if you have a blue indigo in your a little, you know, set here, make sure that that's in somewhere else. Don't keep the blue indigo in here or you will accidentally pick it up and when you go to draw, say, the, uh, uh, not the iris, the pupil, you, you might accidentally do a, uh, a blue. Okay, so, and then that may not seem like it matters, but then when you go to shade on top of that, you're going to be smearing blue, not black. Okay? <laughs> the five monkeys were dancing. So just be aware that you do not want your blue indigo right next to your black, because I, I, trust me, I've done it. All right, so there's some gray, your black, white, your grays, some uh, red, browns, and browns, a couple of pinks, some blues, and now these are the flesh colors. <coughs> Again, well, let me let me start with the yellow. Okay, so this is um, an uh, an ochre color. So whatever kind of ochre you have, this is something ochre. I can't read it. Um, it's number 942, but I can't read. It's some kind of ochre, but I can't read the depth of it. No, yellow, I can't see it. Yellow, oh, it's just plain yellow ochre. Okay, I didn't know if it was a special shade of ochre, but it's, it's just yellow ochre, 942. Some of those tiny little, it's hard for me to read that. Okay, so some kind of a yellow ochre. All right, whatever that. Now, here's the main colors of the, the flesh that we're going to use on Amelia. Now, let me qualify that. These are light, light colors because she's light, pale little girl. All right, it depends on the kind of skin you're drawing as to what your flesh colors will be. I'm just going to give you the ones we're using for Amelia. If I'm doing an African American skin, total different set. Okay, so just just be aware of that. Where you know th these will not draw an African American skin for you. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> but a pale little girl, these will be fine. I don't want to overwhelm you with more than just this many. I think we can, you know, get, get by with just this few. All right, so this is just peach, all right, just a peach color. All right, and again, this the number's covered up. I don't see the number, but it's just a peach color. I think, it, I think it's just called peach, all right. Then I need to sharpen this one. I had to get a new one of these. This is light peach, and it's number 927. Uh, let me sharpen it so you can see it. <clears throat> I'll try to remember to sharpen on the ends that don't cover up the numbers. <laughs> okay. So you can see the difference between peach and light peach. And another hint, 
<coughs> I know I've said this before. If you're buying singular color pencil, Prismacolor uh, is what I'm using, so I'm going to address that. If you're buying Prismacolors, uh, Dee Dee, really? Okay, I missed something there, AJ. Sorry, I missed something there. Uh, if you're buying um, these off the individual, you know, the racks, the pick one out. First off, you never know if they've been dropped. You just, you don't know. Uh, but make sure to look at the barrels. Make sure it is centered. Make sure, and I call it lead, even though it's not lead. Make sure the lead is centered in the wood. If it's off even a little, when you sharpen it, it will break. Sharp and break, sharp and break, sharp and break, because the lead is not centered. So try every time you pick up a pencil individually, look and see, hold it up, and you can just kind of tell, you can twirl it and kind of look and see if it's centered. You want to try to get them as centered as you can. Okay. Got your brown hair, girl. Okay, I, I must have missed... Did somebody get a card that one of the cards that Xander made? Hey, Lindsay. Maybe it was Lindsay. Yeah, she got one of uh, Xander's cards. I think. Yeah, you got to because it, it will break if you don't. Referring to those colors won't do. Yeah, well, I'm just, you know, so, that seems kind of self explanatory, AJ. <laughs> that seems kind of self explanatory when I said that, that these colors won't do African American. But you'd be surprised, people, who I got all those colors. Why can't I draw an African American? I mean, really. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so I'm qualifying any of that. All right, I'm just trying to say, this is for her. These colors are for her. All right. <laughs> AJ. Okay. All right. So here's the tip. Now I'm going to get tickled. So there's the peach and light peach. <laughs> Sorry, guys. If you're watching the recording, sometimes the girls in the chat are just funny. All right. Yeah, I know that sounds self-explanatory, doesn't it? Okay. So there's peach and light peach. All right. All right. Then <clears throat> these two colors I like for. Um, uh, blending, okay? Either or, uh, let me try to see the name of this one. Okay, they look very similar, and so either one of these that you can find, all right? If you can find Ginger Root 1084 or Peach Beige 1085, they're either one of those. I, I'll, I won't be using both. I'll be using, I'll just pick up whichever because they're so similar. For me, either one of those, see, you can't even hardly tell the difference in the color, right? So ginger root, or what did I say it was called? Peach beige. So 1084 or 1085 or something similar. Okay, it's kind of a tan. It's almost like the color of the paper. Okay, so that, let that kind of be your guide. If you can find something similar to the color of your paper, that is what you will do most of your blending with. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of African American. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I have. Where's my girl that I just drew last time? Okay, so hang on, guys. Let's just, uh, I think it's in this one. And I let me show you a couple of different things too. Speaking of color pencil here, let's see. Where is she? She in this book? I can't remember what book I put her in. What book is she? Is she in this book? Yeah. Okay. First, let me show you this. Um, you don't even necessarily have to, depending on your, depending on what paper you want. Again, this is the tone tan in a small. This is five and a half by eight and a half. See, it's just a little bigger than my hand here. If you're using a tone paper, a tone tan, the bulk of her skin tone was the paper. Okay? But then again, th this girl here, which everybody loves her, she even had me, she 
I got I, I know her on a sketch sketchy app um, she really liked the way this turned out so again this is a lot of shading with different you know co different colors than I have here but even when you're doing African American or Asian here's let me show you this is my favorite Asian guy that I've, I love this one even so the white highlights are still going to be they're going to still be lots of highlights you may not think that an, an African American girl would have white but see that's just the way the light is hitting her okay right and it's a little flashed out on camera it's a little bit darker than you're seeing here okay yeah in her photograph she had little windows reflected in her eyes like she's taking a selfie you saw like an arm I guess it's an arm with the, holding up a camera taking a selfie so I tried to capture that in her eyes now it may not autofocus right there but you can kind of get the idea well AJ how I did the braids maybe I'll do a quick little demo on that for you just to show you how this was so simple okay you would be surprised how simple those braids were all right now in this in Amelia the only thing that I think we may use any paint in may be the bow and the reason I may have y'all do something with some paint is just so I can show you like I'm getting ready to show AJ here on the braids the how something like acrylic paint base let me find my um, hang on. An acrylic paint base. So here's my Robert Mitchum. <clears throat> and I do have a step out on this on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, you can see a step by step on this Robert Mitchum. The black in his hat is all started with acrylic paint. Same thing for the blue in his outfit here. Okay? But this is acrylic paint. Now the white, the shading, is color pencil this is color pencil on top of black acrylic paint and that's what I did how I did her braids so I'll show you a little braid demo here in a minute um, I do full portraits um, Bridgeton uh, commissions if you want to it's going to depend on the size and, uh, and if you want more than one person but um, here, Okay. And I do pets as well. So y'all, I know y'all see it. Okay, but I, I don't want to get onto that right now. So email me, um, Carrie, can you put in my, or somebody, uh, Carrie or uh, Eileen, put in my email, please. Let me type it. Or DM me. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. I can't type the uh, the link in because it won't take. Okay. All right. All right. So now, any questions on the color so far? How are we doing on that? And there's a little bit of a chat lag. Thanks, Carrie. I know. I know. <laughs> Gary. I'm checking on that spelling. All right, so any questions on that? Uh, let me go ahead and get just a piece of paper here. Uh, some sketch. Let me just get a little sketchbook here in the back. I've got to use the back of this last sheet. All right. And then I'll show the happy mail. Let me pull out a little bit of black paint. Um, on, okay. All right, so AJ or anybody else that was interested in talking about the braids. All right, so I'm just going to wet my brush. Always have a damp brush. Don't ever start with a completely dry brush when you uh, go into your paint. All right, so I'm just going to do here, I'm just going to show you 
side to the braids quickly. All right, so let me just get a little patch of black here. Okay, and I'm going to let this dry. So while this is just sitting for me, I can get the heat gun, but I'll just let it sit here for a second while I see if there's any questions. Okay, oh, pencil in hand. Okay, a couple other things. Uh, a sharpener. You have to sharpen your pencil almost every time you pick it up. You want sharp pencils. Okay, maybe on a little bit of the, you know, when we're going over it with the, the tan color, of the, uh, it's ginger root or what I call it, uh, what was the other one called? Something beige. Uh, peach beige or whatever color is closest to your tan paper. Now, those you might get a little duller because we're going to do a little blending over the top of things. Those will end up probably being a little duller when you use them. But everything else, you really want to keep your pencils sharp. No, they're not, Tina. They're not included in one set. And and so, Tina, if you're just coming in, go back and watch the recording. I talk about uh, variations that you can use. Okay? What's the color between the black and white? Oh, this is just my, that's just a pencil extender. It's white, if this is what you're talking about. That's just a, you can get these pencils. Now, the, the wood ones are made by General. There's also, um, who makes the, is it? Derwent that makes a silver and a black uh, metal that are a little weightier. Um, there, but that's just so that you can use down to the nubs. Oh, the indigo blue. Yeah, there's an indigo blue in there. Yes, use the similar colors as you can. Again, this is going to be practice. Okay, I want you to look at it as that. I'm not even going to show you her photograph until we're well into it because I want you to practice the techniques above trying to make it look like Amelia. Okay, I just want you to practice the techniques. It's not about, at least this first go round, it's not about making it look like Amelia per se, as you have to learn how to use your shading and coloring. Okay. Then when I post the color of, I mean, the picture, the photograph, the actual photograph of Amelia on my blog, then if you think, okay, I see where our, this needs to be tweaked or that needs to be tweaked, okay? Just, I, I hope that makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, you know, I don't know. I'm not a teacher. I'm just trying to help you all get some, some skills. Okay? All right. So... Again, I'm looking at chat, see if there's anything I may. Okay, the other thing is erasers. <clears throat> okay. Color pencil does not erase easily, all right? When I'm drawing out a sketch, uh, I draw very lightly. I, I've gone over this with my um, terracotta color for the for your you guys' purposes, okay? After I sketched her out, I went back over the lines with the terracotta so that you could see it to print it out. Uh, and then I have also, again, I have printed this out on just the, the Michaels brand, you know, Recollections tan paper to work along with you guys. This is printed out just like you're going to print out, <coughs> which means this is not erasable. Okay, so I'm going to do this along with you with no erasing as far as the base goes once you print this out. Uh, Amelia, you like the way I say Amelia? <laughs> I don't know how you say it. Mandy's her, Mandy's her mom, and she's kindly let us use Amelia's portrait or photograph to do this project with. So when I'm just drawing and sketching, I like, this is a, this is a triangular one, it's just been broken. Any white eraser for just sketching, you know, like these, these are the erasers I use on my pen. Let me find one that's got it on there. Oh, there we go. I'll just sketch with just a plain old paper made disposable technical pencil uh, HB. And the reason I like technical pencils is because they're so small. All right. When I'm just sketching for myself, this is the kind of thing I use. I use much bolder things on camera, like the, uh, you know, the woodless graphite that's big, thick, bold. So here's the difference between this line, which I love this because you can get lots of shading and darkness to it. When I'm just sketching out, I'm just using something like that, okay, for myself. 
and that these uh this eraser and the these kind of erasers will work fine on just graphite. I never use red rubber erasers. I have had too many. Now, it probably wouldn't matter so much on this tone paper, but if you're using a red rubber eraser on white paper, you might get red marks. Those are hard to get rid of. This is just me. I'm not saying it's a hard, fast rule. Never use a red, you know, you know, nothing like that. Um, that one's cracked. You can't that. So any kind of a white rubber, the white kind of, a, I think it's plastic, white plastic type of erasers is fine when you're doing just plain, you know, sketching, all right, with uh, graphite. But these will not, and, unless, oh, well, <laughs> These will not erase color pencil that's been layered. It might take off a little, but it's not going to take off a lot. So one of the things to remember when we're doing this is we we never really dig in with our pencil. Now, we might do a real dark right in the center of the iris or something, I mean the uh, pupil, something like that, but we're layering lightly, lightly. No, I do not use blenders or solvents of any kind. All right, uh, I just haven't found it necessary. For one, I don't like the solvents because depending on your paper, the solvents can stain the paper. Depending on the paper and all that, I just do not like the solvents. All right, I have in the past used. Let me see if I got one handy. Is this one? No, that's okay. I may not have one right right here, but they they look like this. This is just a charcoal pencil, but they look kind of like this. That the the blendable sticks by Prismacolor. It kind of looks like a wood with kind of a rubbery thing on there. I don't use them. Okay, uh, if you find that you while when you get more into color pencil, you like that. I blend everything with pencils. Not saying there's anything wrong with that. Don't, you know, don't email me. Oh, so-and-so uses the blender. Well, then use a blender. <laughs> okay. Again, this is just, um, this is how I work it. Okay. <laughs> and then sometimes it changes depending on the skin or what's going on. You know, I'm not going to be using this technique uh, on her. Maybe in the bow, which just to show you guys how to do it. So if you want to do a blue bow, pink bow, whatever, we'll, I don't even remember what color the bow in, is in her hair. I don't have the photograph right in front of me. But just to show you how to do this type of a thing with acrylic paint. That's why I always say my portraits are mixed media. If I need to use a black pen for the pupil, like a, uh, you know, a Sharpie pen to get right in a touch or um, something like that, then I will. Now, oh, let me do say this. You will probably need some white acrylic paint for that purpose. Uh, at the very end, when, well, except for the eyes, I kind of try to get the eyes going right away. But except for the eyes, we won't be doing any white acrylic highlighting till the very end. But you will need the cheapest acrylic paint you, you, need, you want. Okay, I use Americana, but <coughs> whatever brand you want. And it can be. I'm trying to see if I small here. This one's my travel one, so it's in a little baggie. A Craft Smart, uh, a Americana, whatever kind of white craft paint, whatever kind of white craft paint, this is probably 50 cents. You will need one of these. Okay. Uh, no, I, I really haven't, AJ, because I've been so happy with Prismacolor, except for the breakage issue. Uh, I, I'm happy with Prismacolor. I've tried a couple other brands, uh, but, you know, I, I just keep coming back to my Prismacolors, even though, if they, you know, I hope they fix more of the quality control as far as the breaking. And as I said earlier, the centering of the lead uh, so they don't break. Okay, so that is the only paint you will probably have to have unless I decide we might need a pink or something for the bow. And then it will only be one shade of pink. Whatever color shade of pink you have will be fine. 
okay? And that's if the bow's pink. Mandy, is her bow pink? I don't even know. All right, so anyway, so you will need a little white acrylic paint. And what I'm saying, guys, is you will probably only end up needing, just to, for your FYI, you probably only will need that much. But, you know, it doesn't come in that quantity. You'll have to buy a little 50 cent thing of white paint. Even though that's probably all the white paint you'll end up using. Okay? All right. So there's that. Let's see what else I need to cover before I do my happy mail. All right. Let's see. Excuse a squeaky chair, guys, but it is what it is. All right. All right. Any more questions? Any experience? Okay. Any more questions on the colors? Or anything like that. Pencils. Oh, oh, well, what I was going to say is where I was back on the erasers. I like to use on color pencil, if I really need a tough eraser, for me, this is the eraser um, of choice. I buy these pencils just really much. Cam, my grandson, loves to use them for drawing. But I buy them for the erasers. They're the Dixon Ticonderoga Black HB Pencils. They have a black eraser. This eraser does not leave marks like a red one does, and it's a tough eraser. I think you can buy maybe in um, uh, architect, you know, drafting supply section, you probably can find a black eraser. But I love the Dixon Ticonderoga Black. Okay, it's called Black. Not that the pencil's lead; it's just a lead pencil. But the the this the wood is black and the uh, and the uh, erasers black. They have uh, Ticonderoga regular yellow pencils too. The bow is white. Okay, then we'll then we'll be uh, uh, maybe we'll just do some white paint on that too, just for extra. Or maybe we'll do it pink, just to have a, or you know another color, just so that we can practice using the paint uh, base. Okay, you do not have to have this for this project. I'm just saying if you really want a an eraser that works the best that I found on color pencil, it is the black eraser from the Ticonderoga. Okay, you do not have to have this. Again, I repeat, you do not have to have this for this project. I'm just saying that this is a good eraser for color pencil. Okay? <laughs> You do not have to have it. All right, so let's go back over here. I think real quick, this is dry. I just want to show you how I did the braid. So I, let me find your picture again. So what I did is all around this, her face is just solid black. That is just a solid piece of black paint right there around where the braids are. Okay. Then what I did is I started with a gray blue. Let me just get one that'll show up here and sharpen it. <laughs> this one is just the uh, blue violet lake. Okay. And it's 1079. Again, it's going to depend on the lighting of the picture. But what I did is she had many braids that were just straight down and these are the tight braids the tiny little I don't know if there's a, you know they're just the little tiny tight braid you probably won't really see it the whole day but then some crossed over like this which that's what gives it the dimension okay so I just started with the blue then I would take the white and do just a little bit of a highlight on each one not a lot. There's not a lot of detail. I'll show it to you here and again. Then this one, though, went this way. It crossed over going that way. So you just have the direction correct, you see. And so that's how I did the braids. Very loose, very un... not a lot of detail. Okay, so let me show you the picture again so you can see. There she go. See? So look. It's the blue and the white repeated over and over with some going over the top. You see, there's not a lot of detail. Some of them are just littler in the back, skinny, you know, tinier little dashes. Some are the, the more forefront braids are wider, 
because they're closer to you. But if you look real close, look, all it is is little lines and dashes. But when you look at the overall picture, see how it looks like? Little micro braids? Thanks, AJ. You see how that worked? That's all it is. Now, of course, I did these perfectly straight, and these, you know, did a little curve here. You know. You can even down toward the end, you know, let me get some of the lighter ones that barely show may just, you just may see just a little tiny bit in there. With just a tiny bit of, you know, extra micro braids in the very, very back. Okay? That's how I did the braids. That, was that helpful, AJ? You're welcome. But yeah, I really like the reflection in her eyes. It's a little window in there. Okay? Alright. Any, any more questions on anything else? Real quick. <laughs> so again, Inky Well, I N K I W E L L dot blogspot dot com to get this sketch to right click, save on your computer, go to your printer and print it out on tan paper. It doesn't have to be this exact tan, but it's just tan paper. Okay? Hey, Vicky. So print that out on tan paper. Print out multiples. Okay? That way, if you think, oh, I've really messed this up, which hopefully you won't think that because we're going to do it slow and step by step. So the other thing I thought is maybe what do y'all think about starting on Wednesday? Okay? Wednesday. This coming two days from now. And I'm thinking we'll probably work Although the show will probably be about two hours because I'm going to stop and talk and y'all have questions and all that. But actual working time will probably only be about an hour. Yes, Tina. All right, so again, if, here's the braids. And somebody had a commercial while I was talking about it. And here, Tina. It's just black acrylic paint with a blue and a white little dashes. Okay, that's how I did the braid. And just depending on how, which way you get the braid going, like here, this one curves around her face. Some tiny ones in the back. This one is over the top of all the other braids. Some are a little bit wider. Some are tiny, like um, AJ said, micro braids. Okay. Yes, I'll record everything. I'm going to record the uh, homeschool mom. Okay. Hey, Dana. So hopefully that's just a little uh, talk about what we're going to do. And I'm thinking we'll start on Wednesday at 9 Eastern. My usual stream times are 9, 9 Eastern. Okay. That's fine, Tina. So I am recording this. I will upload it to YouTube. So if, if any of you guys are watching on YouTube, watching the recording, feel free to come over uh, to Coffee and Art in the Morning on Ustream. There's a link right under the window of my recordings where you can come over. And then if you follow me, then hopefully when I go live, you will get an email alert. It depends. Sometimes it seems like UK and overseas does not get the alert. I don't know. I guess it just depends on the browser, how Ustream sends out their email alerts. But, you know, I, I plan on streaming 9 a.m. Wednesday morning uh, to start our project. So just go print it out. <coughs> go print her out. And this is Amelia. Amelia. <laughs> Mandy's daughter. And uh, so we're going to use her for practice. Again, I'm not posting the photograph that I'm using for reference until we do a few steps in for the purpose of you not being intimidated by looking at the photo and going, oh no, mine doesn't look like that. That's, <laughs> you know, we don't want that to happen. Um, okay? 
This, we want you to feel like you're just practicing and learning and not worrying. Print out multiples. You can, <laughs> you know. All right. Yeah, I don't know why, Robbie. Again, you're in Canada. Um, all right. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. Yeah, exactly. Mandy in Australia, it's going to be different. Canada, UK. So, yeah. So if you get an email alert in the middle of the night, it, well, it would be the middle of the night for you, Mandy. <laughs> All right. So if you all have any more questions about this, put it in caption and ask me. Otherwise, I'm going to quickly show you my happy mail, which includes a sock monkey bandana. I have it doubled over uh, so that it would be nice and bright on camera. So, um, yeah, this is from Sister Woman Jonna, Scrappy Camper Sister. And by the way, shh, today's Darcy. Scrappy camper sister, other the pair, their sisters, you know. It's Darcy Glam's birthday today. Shh, she should get her card today. She should have her card in her mail today. All right, but let me show you what I got from Sister One. I purchased one of her faux dory cloth. These are cloth faux dory. It did not doesn't come with anything in it. I've already outfitted this one with just white paper. I'll show you some of the other faux dories that I have going on. She has, she did it just like a real dory with the elastic, this elastic that goes around in the inside. And, but I added, so you're going to see some black there. I added another black uh, elastic on the inside. So I had extra places to put things in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know it is cute, isn't it? Uh, somebody asked her where she got it. I think she said she got it at a little local uh, store in her area, so uh, you know, I, I can't tell you where she got it or whatever. You could probably find it's just a square of fabric. I mean, that's all a bandana is. You could, you know, probably buy you a half yard somewhere, maybe Joann's or something. I don't know, I've not looked. And then just stitch the edges, and there you go. You got you a. <laughs> I, I, I think I will be wearing this the next time I do a uh, room view kind of uh, show. I think I will be wearing my sock monkey bandana. So just saying. Be 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 aware. I will be wearing that next time I do a face to face with you guys. <laughs> All right. So I purchased this. Again, uh Sister Woman takes mission she goes on mission trips to um different places and um helps the children in those places. And uh, so all the proceeds, when you buy one of these from her, will go to that. It comes with a little pin loop. All right. And uh, so just I, this is what I use to write with is just a Sharpie pen. And I have put my own papers in it. Now, I like all different sizes of papers, which I'm going to show you a couple of my other dories, if you want to call them that, <laughs> where I've uh, made them myself with uh, extra uh, well, I'll show you in a minute. All right, so but hers is the official, I think it's the official, like the size of your traveler's Midori. And there's different places on YouTube where you can find how to make them yourselves. But I have all different sizes of papers in here. Okay, I did use all cardstock, and then in between the cardstock, I just used some printer paper just to have some to write on and then some to draw and paint on. And so and then this is the inside. It's all handmade. And it's got that, it's like that, um, I don't know what you call it inside there. S size, not sizing. What am I thinking of? You sewers out there. That has inside there, you know, it's kind of stiff but not stiff. There's a, there's a, it's not sizing. So what do y'all know what I'm talking about? Bye, Kathy. Have a good day. Um. Oh, what is that called, guys? I'm not a sewer. Is it craft tech? I don't know. Xandra, I'm not sure if that's what she, no, it's not, it's not plastic. It's cloth. It's kind of like, it almost feels like, um, it's not plastic. Interfacing. I bet that's what though I'm looking for, Mindy. Thank you. Interfacing. It's, but it's, it's like thick. You know what I mean? Fern? I don't know, Pelon? <laughs> Eileen saying Pelon. I don't know. Interfacing as well. Interfacing is what I was thinking of. To make it kind of stiff like that. See, it bounces back. Yeah, okay. 
<laughs> All right. So that's what it is. And she's got the two layers, you know, of fabric. But I love this pattern. That's why I bought it. So it's a very nice fabric. It's Pellon, people are saying. Thanks, Marion. Interfacing. Is Pellon a brand name of interfacing? All right. So anyway. So I've already, like, put a, a bunch more in there. I added some more. Uh, I added an extra loop of black through the middle down to the other end, just using the holes she already had there, just to add more so I can put more in there. All right, so I bought that from Sister Woman. And again, it's got the little pin loop there. I just love it. It's, it's really nice. It's, it feels good, okay? Okay. Yes, it's kind of like what's in a baseball cap, but this is a little more flexible than a baseball cap. Baseball caps aren't quite this flexible. Okay, but anyway, so contact uh, Jonna, Scrappy Camper Sister, uh, if you are interested and see if she's got any more or if she's making any more or what she's doing with those. All right. She also sent me a pocket letter, even though I'm not her swap partner in the pocket letter swap. She's having so much fun doing them. She sent me one. Now, i got to say, I have already taken a couple of things out and um, used them, including she also she sent me a hand-carved stamp down here in this one. So it, it, this was tucked in there. All right, I've already used it a whole bunch of times to make little cards for myself. All right, so I'm making little cards to, that I can, I can put these in a, a happy mail that I send out. Thank you, Carrie. Scrappy Camper Sisters, plural, dot blogspot, okay, dot com. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that's, yeah, right. Got you, Carrie. So she included that. And here she had stamped out right there with the stamp. And this was tucked in there, okay. This was tucked inside one of the pockets. And then on the back of the little stamp, it says, and carved by Jonna. It looks like she's used one of those little erasers. Mm -hmm. So I have stamped some out and put little steam and just a little swipe of a little table or something there so that I can put, uh, you know, happy mail, whatever on there. I know, I love that stamp too. Paula's carved a, 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 a coffee cup too. Okay, so that was in tucked in here along with this little this little one. Little you know, cut out one here. Not sure where she got it, but it's in the little coffee thing there with a couple little tags. So let me, I'm gonna try to show y'all all the different things. Okay. So that was, and then the paper on the background, this one was coffee paper. Okay. There's a little banner on a twine that is going across the top there that she stapled with the tiny attacher. <laughs> Y'all see my tiny attacher, right? And well, I've shown it a few times. This is my tiny attacher. Anyway, so she just stapled a little banner with hello across the top there, which is just adorbs. I always say I'm not going to say that, but I sometimes slip and say adorbs. So that's just like a little loose banner across the top. All right, so let me show you some of the other things. Oh, and let me show you the other side. Here's the other side. Okay, so we're going to take and show uh, different things. Her letter was paper clipped to the outside within a little envelope with hello and then her little letters inside. I'm not going to read the letter. One of the things that I, I, I'm guessing or thinking about pocket letters, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, I've only done two or three. <laughs> I know, right, Lindsay? Is to me, the letter part is personal. And I don't know uh, about share. You know, I just don't think that the letter part is the sharing part. You know, we, we all show our pocket letters on camera and all that and you know sometimes just pictures but to me the letter part is personal and I just don't you know I think that should remain personal that's just me you know unless somebody writes in the letter oh share it share it then you know I never mind sharing when someone says oh yes you can share but otherwise uh, if it's something personal I, I don't okay 
Yeah, I don't mess around with Cubs of Eye Tool. <laughs> So this is the back. So let me just go ahead and show you the front and the back um, of it. She has all kinds of little cuteness, little things in it. She has stickers on the outside. Here is the. She has the word happiness. And if y'all don't know about all the pocket letter craze, to me, it's it's artist cards with extra stuff tucked in. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, that's just that's what remind. Having done ATCs for so many years, um, and and now we're adding things to it and letters to it and now we and we did a swap and Jay Merle who just hosted this last swap uh, uh, she had something like we had 35 I think didn't we in the Janet 35 in this last swap okay all right so let me kind of show you what she has in it she has a uh, outside sticker that says happiness letter, clips, washi, this one says never let go of your dreams, and this one has a little, a little, one of those little magnetic paper uh, clip things, with a little coffee cup, she had that tuck, st uh, stuck on there, she had some Shasta daisy seeds in here, which I've already opened up and planted, and then I put the package back in here, so I've already planted the Shasta daisies. All right, so here, let's kind of go one by, oh, and then down here she has moments, um, hey friend, and here's where she put a little picture of her, oh, I also tucked in, this was what she had wrapped around the, um, she had some, a pretty paper wrapped around this, and then this was all wrapped around. She had a little a string tied around it, a high, a little pair of glasses, this was all wrapped around this when it was folded up, okay? And so I'm keeping that tucked in one of the pockets. Here's a picture. If y'all don't know Strappy Camper Sisters, let me open this up. She has some tags in the inside here with a little perfume bottle. But she has a photograph. This is actual like Instax or whatever the little photographs are uh, of her. That's her zippy trailer that she camps out in. And there's her little Ollie. There's Ollie right there. Now, Sister Woman, I call her Sister Woman. She's Darcy's sister, and here in the South, it's just, anyway, I won't get it. It's Sister Woman. I call John a Sister Woman, and Darcy Glam is her sister. She hooks this baby up and travels all by herself. I mean, she goes with sometimes meetups, too, but she'll just, her and Ollie will go, look how little it is. It's an adorbs. Oh, I wasn't going to say it, but you can't help not saying adorbs with Ollie and her zippy. Look, she's got a little stool there. I guess that's so that Ollie can just step out, too. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? So she has that tucked in um, this pocket right there. Actual, It's an actual photograph glued on. <laughs> okay, and so anyway, I kept all the little wrappings, and I just tucked that in this little folder. Here, let me pull it back up. I just tucked that all right in that little folder there because I just thought it was so cute with the little glasses and all. All right. So up here at the top, and I'll probably go front to back here, she has a little uh, scripture, a little verse. She has a little mini pen, which I'm not going to use this. It's not going to come out of here. It's going to stay in here. <laughs> it's gonna little... And then on the other side here, she has some gum. Look. It's just so cute, right, guys? And then this, again, this says the letter, which she had paper clipped on the back because it's in this pocket that's a little bigger than the pocket. Okay. Um, oh, I missed something. Oh, oh, okay, Vicki, stay safe. Vicki in Louisiana's got a tornado warning. Vicki, stay safe. Okay. Uh, on this one, I did go ahead and put a little tiny piece of washi tape to keep this closed because these little paper clips pull that off here, were falling out. So let me take them out to show you. These not uh, clothespin, sorry. She has me a little rabbit trail. This is a wooden one. It's wood. A little rabbit trail clip, and then these tiny little mini clothespins. So I wanted—I didn't want them to fall out because I put this in the, my book, 
my binder that I made just for these. Uh, and so I just put a little piece of washi tape here just to hold that in there. Oh, let me see what I got on the other side. And that was the Shasta seed, which I've already planted. Let me tuck that pin back in, which I've already planted. Okay, so that's the top row. I'm kind of trying to go row by row. I know, right, Lisa? It's so cute. Okay, then down here is washi tape. So she it's front and back. It's on a plastic piece of plastic. Just you probably can't see it with a little shine there. But it's a, like a piece of uh, plastic, maybe a piece off of a, you know, a packaging or something. And then she's got washi tape. And the thing about the washi tape is it doesn't stick to itself. So you can use it and just peel it up. And which I might take a little bit off just to you know use a little bit but I'm you know the thing about these things guys is people put all these cute things for you to use are we really gonna take it out and use it other than Shasta Daisy and my stamp I mean are we really gonna use this stuff like I'm not gonna de, de take all this off I might take a little bit off but you know it's just you want the whole experience here. <laughs> I know so then the, here's the middle one let's take the both sides out okay so what she has here is a little come on in we're open copy and she put art on there that's the front card but in the back look she has this little match box or, um faux match book thing like you know where the you know how they are it's not a match book but it's that design that tucks in and then inside she has and I did take a couple of these out these little uh, post-it notes with the pen, pen nib, and some little books. Let's see. They're flags, post-it note flags. And she made this little book, as far as I know, or somebody made it if she didn't, with a little tiny attacher thing. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Jonna made that. Isn't that so cute? Hey, Paula. If it's tucked inside, it's fair game. Yeah, but, you know, we just, it's so, you don't want to take it apart other than the stamp and the seeds. And then I put the seed package back in because it looks so cute. <laughs> okay. Um, and then again, like I said, this is the little uh, magnetic paper thing here. The inside here on the back, let me see if I can get them out. On the back side here, let me put this one back in. With a little coffee. I got, see, I'm putting it all back together exactly like she had it, right? A whole bunch of little tag things. Little phone. Let me turn them over. Little tags. Hello. Some little, these are like uh, tabs. You fold, you know, tabs. I, I, I can't use them. I can't use these tabs. They have to stay in here. <laughs> I might use one. <laughs> okay, so let me flip them back over to the Oh, let me put that phone facing the top because I want that to show on the other side. Okay, so I'm showing y'all row by row. Okay, everything row by row. All right, so then this bottom row down here. Now I already showed you this one with where I tucked in all the wrappings too. Okay, so this one is a phone paper clip. One of these, see? And then she had this little coffee is calling. Little, isn't that clever? Coffee is calling. Coffee and art in the morning. Okay. And again, another little like folder, like a little, you know, little folder thing. It's a little this is a fun, this is a sticker and she left it on the she left it on the plastic, so if I wanted to use it. Okay, I can just peel that off if I want to use it. And a couple of these little handmade paper clips with the little flags on them. Hey, bunny. Okay, and then this little paper clip is on the back with the little typewriter and glasses. In. So that's what's in this pocket. And it goes this way. I, I think it doesn't matter, but I like it that way. Okay, so there's that. 
Then I showed you this one with her photograph with her and Ollie. And then this one is the one with the uh, little cup that's had the stamp in it. Okay. And the little coffee cup. So this is the stamp that she carved that was in this pocket, which I've taken out and used a few times to make my own little cards with it. So that's John's little stamp that was in here with the front of this with these tags, this little coffee cut out. Okay, and this paper. And then on the back side here, she had this tiny little Starbucks uh, ready to brew <laughs> tucked in there. Love your life. That was in this one. Like that. And so that was all her little pockets. And again, I wasn't even her swap partner. <laughs> She just said she loves making them. And then the little stamp was tucked in there. Okay, so there we go. So that was my sister woman, Jonna's pocket sweater. I know, isn't it adorable? So, again, I bought this little cheap three ring binder at Michael's for two dollars and fifty cents it's a little shy of you know fitting it's just just a little cheap one that came with some of that photo paper stuff that we're not we never want to use with photos this stuff this peel back and put your you know this is what we used to use back you know 30 years ago to put your photos in don't ever put your photos in I don't care if it says it's acid free that's the worst thing for your photos but I kept them because what these are good for is little bits of whatever. Uh, if you just have a little uh, piece of, let me just find something here. You know, if you just have a little, you, know, you just have a little scrap of something uh, that you might want to use in collage or something. This is what this is good for. It's just storing little bits of stuff. So that's what that's for. But anyway, I have a bunch, I bought some blank sleeves, and I've only got a few, um, I've only got a few here. Let me put, uh, this is the, this is the one that I got in my swap. And then, uh, oops, I'm going to put a letter back on there. So again, oops, let me see if I put that back on there. I'll put it all back together like I like, had it. And so, there we go. Just a cheap little, it was just $2.50 just to keep these in. There we go. And then I just put a hair band around it to hold it. And uh, so that's what that's for. Okay. All right. Yeah, if you have your photos on those old plastic, you know, peel backs, you need to take them out. <laughs> they're, if they're already not yellowed and faded anyway so yeah so this is what i bought from sister woman again you might want to check and see if she has any more that she's selling and they just they don't come with the paper now they don't come with the paper or the pen they just come with just the photo oh that was the other thing i was going to show you is my other fake dories or whatever <laughs> okay so i had some of these other uh old that I've had forever, and they had come like this one had come with a um, some kind of a journal in it, tucked into the. Do I have the pockets on this one? I don't even remember. Was it sewn in? I don't remember. Anyway, I think it, I got these at Barnes and Noble many, many years ago, and they're laying around with not being used. So I did my own little elastic cording through the middle and made my own faux dories. So all it is is just one of the plastic, a uh, plastic, elastic through the ends, top and bottom on the inside, and I doubled it so that it's, you know, I want to make sure it's thick. All the signatures are just held together with rubber bands. Now, really, what I should really do, though, is instead of having the rubber bands, I could do it with the plastic. You know, I could uh, make my own make my own rubber bands, so to speak. The thing about doing it like this with just the one thing going down the middle and everything else is held together with rubber bands is if one of the rubber bands breaks, it's easily put back another rubber band, right? So this is just one that I made, and 
I kind of showed it before it was attached. So all it is is just there's just one doubled one doubled cording through the middle of this the middle one. Okay, there we go. They're all held together with rubber bands. Rubber bands are holding one book to the next book. So this book is held together to that book with a rubber band. Okay? Yes. Well, this is a faux dory. If you want to see a real dory, uh, the Travelers, Paula's got one. She'll probably, sh she'll show it to you next stream if you ask her. She's got the real dory. <laughs> Alright, so what I liked about this is I could make the paper the size I wanted. Alright? And as many signatures in the color paper. So I did a gray, a cream, a black, a craft, cream, gray, and a craft. It doesn't have to be in no particular order. It's just that that looks good on the outside. Okay. Yeah, I don't have one of the duct tape, the uh, duck dories as Sister Woman and, uh, and uh, let me move my paper. Jonna and Darcy do the duck dories out of duct tape. And they do have a stream on that one. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Homeschool Mom 4. So if you go to Scrappy Camper Sisters dot blogspot dot com, you can find out how to do a duck dory out of duct tape. Okay. Now on this one I did I, I cut all the pages on the corners. I did use my corner chomper and chomp down all the all the ones on this fabric one. Well, I have not done that on these. Okay. Although I do like that look. And I might go and, and corner chomp all these. And then each signature I did a, a one of these uh, Tim Holtz uh, Tim Holtz paper? I think so. The uh, oh, I forget what collection it's called. But anyway, so each signature is one of those. And see again, they're just held together with a rubber band. See right there? This one's connected to this one. This one is connected to the next one by another rubber band. Okay? And they're all held in in the middle with just one, one, one of these, uh, elastic cordings, if you will. Wildfire, flower, wildflower. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah. And so I just put each signature has one of these, uh, I just put that around each one. Okay, that one. So each one, each signature, color color signature has its own uh, little wildflower wrap. Okay, and so then this just wraps around, and it's just like this. It tucks through there like this, and tucks through like that. Okay, so this is just a piece of leather that I have left, and all I did was poke a hole here, poke a hole here and string through the double thickness of this elastic cording. That's it. That's all it is. Everything else is held together with rubber bands. Same thing for this one. Okay, this is another just piece of leather cover that I had from some other book that has the flaps in it. So I showed a different couple different things you could do with this as well. Same thing. Okay. It, they're all held together with rubber bands with the one in the middle holding all the signatures in the actual book. Okay, there's the, where I put it through the top and through the bottom right there on the seam. And then this one just wraps a little differently. This with the straps. Okay. okay. So any questions on that? So again, same type of thing. And then there's Sister Woman. Okay. I think that's it, guys. I think that's all I got for today. I wanted to show you all the happy mail, my sock monkey <laughs> bandana, and uh, happy mail, and to talk about our project. So again, we're going to probably start on it Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern. You know, all things, you know, no problems with stream or anything like that. Uh, we'll start, and I will record. Okay. If y'all did, if y'all missed the first, you know, 45 minutes here to this morning, go back and watch it because I talk about all the 
pencils, the supplies, the, the way to print it out, what to print it on, all that. Okay? All right. Any questions before we go? So again, this is on my blog, and it's also on Twitter. If you, you know, I got the high resolution one on my blog, so you can just right click, save it, and print it on tan paper. Okay. Aw, oh, thanks. And hi, Wee Hootie. Thanks everybody for being here. Let me just kind of scroll down, see if I missed saying good morning. I'm sure I did. CB Lisha. Um, Cheeky Girl, Cindy Lou, CJ, I know I said hi to like Dana, and hey Deb, Jilly, Harry, hi Harriet, don't see you much around, and of course thank you Carrie and Eileen for modding, uh, Paula, I've, I've watched, I think I've watched pretty much that last stream of yours Paula, that was good, uh, y'all go ahead and put links or anything like that, Lindsay Wimsey, Lorian, Lula Bell, hi Lula Bell, Miss Yancey, Packer die, hi Packer die. Moomy, Penny, Tina, anybody else I missed? Sharipa, Lisa, hi Lisa. Tammy Kent, Tammy Co. Colleen, Vicky L, Z. Thanks everybody. All right guys, y'all have a great. <laughs> Lick my bandana for you. <laughs> ah, Janet, I love you. Okay, guys, have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday morning, uh, unless, you know, or on Twitter, of course. Bye, guys.